real quick one. I just wanted to put this out there because why not? I love ranting and stuff like that. Um, so someone says to me, you know you did that video about Scotty Kilmer blowing spark plugs chips out of fucking holes and all the rest of it. Uh, wait until you see this. So I'll, I'll just play the clip. If you have a car that's leaking brake fluid because old steel brake lines have rusted out, then today's your lucky day because I'm going to show you how to replace old rotten brake lines. Sometimes a little ingenuity is better than the original design. Who wants to take the whole rear of the car apart to replace a stinking little line? Now the tools you need are pretty basic. Just a little tube cutter like this. Some steel brake line tubing that comes in real of the right size. You make sure it's the same size as yours. And these little brass connectors so you can splice the two ends together. And we'll put the splice on this side. And then make that side tight. Then you know your brakes are nice and hard. Hard! No, not soft. Hard plastic edges. Ha! So the next time your car has rotten brake lines, why not replace them yourself? So in this he's showing you how to use these connectors that you can base, these flared connectors that you can put on. Um, and he's doing his brake lines and stuff like that. And it was so fucking funny because I was reading the comments to that video. And um, someone drew my attention to it. It shows you the packet that he shows you these fittings some steel brake line tubing that comes in real of the right size you make sure it's the same size as yours and these little brass connectors 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 not only that is someone pointed out that it says on the packet do not use for brake lines <laughs> <laughs> right, so this is hydraulic fittings and stuff like that. Hydraulic fittings, um, people think because hydraulic fittings and hydraulic systems go to such high pressures that they're dangerous, dangerous. Yes, they can be, but they're not as dangerous as air systems. You see, when, an, when a hydraulic system, if you have, a, just say, like a syringe and you have a piston in here, if you compress this, and this goes up to a thousand psi. If you get a leak in this, basically, the fluid will just piss out. It'll just bleed out, right? It just bleeds out. It's forced out, but it bleeds out, and the pressure, in a sense, just drops off. The problem with air is that when you burst an air system, all the air basically rushes this way. The whole fucking lot. With this, it's like a tube of toothpaste, right? You squeeze it, and then you let go, and it doesn't really flex back out. If you squash a balloon, it will basically push the whole thing back out. So if you've got in sausage balloons, and you give it a squeeze like that, and it bulges at that end, so there's some sexual innuendos in here somewhere. When you let go, it immediately pops back, you can feel it. Where with hydraulic systems, as soon as they bleed off the pressure, as soon as that pressure drops, and that pressure can be literally... You make enough room for two drops and then the pressure just drops out. This is the difference between compressible and incompressible fluids. I say incompressible, they are compressible, it's just you can compress steel and stuff like that. It's just that relatively oils and stuff like that are practically non-compressible versus gases and stuff like that. Problem is, is that all of this air just tries to fucking rush out like this. And generally what happens is it causes tears, so basically that, that single area cannot basically take all that air going out of it and it rips. And when it rips it just goes bang and it just all fucking comes out like this. And the reason why you hear a bang and stuff like that is because it's a pressure wave and it's air pushing air so you get sound. Where with hydraulic systems, you know, they can just weep and stuff like that. They don't really, it's not the same kind of thing. The energy isn't basically all fucking focused into one area. So... Um, but anyway, you're getting back to the point is that hydraulic seals, olives and stuff like that, flaring pipes and all the rest of it, blah, 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 blah. These systems do still have to deal with these kind of pressures. And refrigeration fittings, I don't know, I think they go up to about 200 PSI maximum, something like that. Where your brake systems can take up to like three or four, five, six thousand PSI. And... Hence why we, you know, this is why we don't have air in our brake lines, because you just basically compress the air. 
it just warms up a bit. Nothing would really happen. It won't transfer that energy across because it's just cramming in these molecules. The, you know, if you look at a syringe, let's just look at two syringes. One's got air in it. Say we've got a piston there. And one's got oil in it like this. This is this. The air is just loads of molecules nicely spaced apart like this. With, I'm not going to draw it out, with oil it's like this. They're all just, if you zoom in, they're all just like this right next to each other and the, the gaps between them are fuck all where compared to the gas. Just say if we could take a sample like this and blow it up. A little tiny sample like this. Our liquid would be something like, you know, not like this, more like a solid, but you get what I mean. It's more like this. Well, the gas will be like that. So when we compress a gas, we can see a massive change in volume. We can proper compress gases because we're trying to shift this over here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where with our liquids and stuff, and obviously solids, solids they literally are a lattice structure and stuff like that. Um, it's, you know, there's, there's fuck all. You can rearrange them and squish them. There is gaps, but the gaps are tiny. When you add up all them gaps, you get a bit of displacement. With gases, the, it's, it's like, let's just say, this is 99.99998% uh, nothing in here. It's just fucking nothing. Where in here, it's like 1% is nothing, you know, in this. It, it, it's fuck all. So we can only basically compress this, change its volume by about 1% maximum, where this fucking, we can compress the absolute living shit out of it. You could even go so far as compressing a gas so much that you can actually cause it to sweat. You could compress a gas so much that literally you start to get uh, water, or not water, liquids develop out of that gas. You'd have to compress the living shit out of it. But you can literally force those molecules to just basically come out of suspension. But you get what I mean. It's just the differences between the two. And each different system can handle it. It's all the material strength, the actual pipes themselves the wall thickness, stuff like that, can only take so much force applied to it. So if you look at the pipe work itself, let's just say you had a pipe like Scotty, old, old Scotty Dickhead has, you've got a pipe in here, if this has got 3000 PSI, the outside is 15 PSI, it's nothing. So basically all of the stress is put on this pipe itself. Where, and just say we have a really skinny wall, right, like that. The actual fitting that is required for this is probably a different material, and it's a lot thicker. So when you've got the 3000 PSI, it's the exact same thing, and you've got your 15 PSI here. You know, this is why submarines weigh so much, because submarines, they do not want to increase the pressure inside. They'd love to increase the pressure inside, but the thing is, that means it can't dive, it can't... So, um, what do you call it now? It's not dive, it's the other one. Float. <laughs> What's the, what do you call it for some reason when they come out of the water? It's not breaching, it's... Oh! I forgot the word. Anyway, we'll all, all have a laugh in the comments about how much of a fucking dumbass I am. But, uh, yeah, basically, this is why submarines weigh so much, because the walls have to be fucking so thick, because they want to kind of keep the pressure inside close to atmospheric. So all the submariners don't get fucking the bends when they fucking... Oh, what's it called? <laughs> I'm trying to think of Red October. Surface. Is that it? It can't be just that simple. <laughs> well, it probably is when they surface. When submarines surface, everyone just... Oh, they'd all just die. You know what I mean? Because they have the bends, the blood boiling, blah, 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 blah. So they try and keep the submarine the same as it is up so they'd have to go through decompression and stuff like that. Um, but then the walls have to be ridiculously thick to take these pressures, and hence why they have crush depths. There's only so far they can go before the structural integrity of the submarine can't take it. Same with these fucking brake lines. Especially when it says on the fucking packet. And this is what I mean about people doing YouTube videos who are telling loads of people loads of things, where to get them. They give them the Amazon link, which he did. This is where I got this, and this is where I got this, and this is where I got this. People are going to copy that. Scotty Kilmer's got what, however thousand, hundred thousand million subscribers. He must know what he's talking about. He's been doing this for years. He keeps on showing us pictures back in the 1970s when he was a mechanic. And it's like, dude, 
well, all that's going to happen now is you're going to slam on your brakes, it's going to blow the brake line. Fuck it, you spill brake fluid everywhere. You've got no brakes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's it, you're fucked and you're still doing 70 mile an hour. And now your wheels are slipping all over the place because you've just blown fucking, you know, brake fluid fucking everywhere. It's just... But there's no one policing it. That's why I do these videos, because there's no one policing it. There's no one saying, you need to stop doing that because that's fucking dangerous. They knew, the, the people who developed that, that fitting knew that there are dickheads out there like Scotty Kilmer. They didn't think he'd be advertising it all around the fucking world. But they knew and they said, this is not to be used with hydraulic braking systems. Fucking, how simple does it need to get? The guy can obviously read, I'm pretty sure he can read. Didn't he just look at it and go, oh fucking hell, oh, I can't do that video then. No, he might have seen it, he might have not, but the fact is he doesn't check and he doesn't know what he's talking about. This is the difference between people with spanners and engineers where we go to fucking college and we go to university and we get these qualifications and we learn this stuff and people have made the mistakes before and killed themselves or set themselves on fire or crashed at 50 mile an hour or whatever oh hope that makes sense and i'll see you in a bit